All right, let's get started. It's uh, 7.30, so we might as, or 7.31 actually, now 7.32, so we'll, we'll dive right in. So tonight, we're talking about hashtags, commenting, and sharing. And in fact, we're going to be talking not just about those three things, or rather, let me say this. Tonight, we're going to be definitely talking about those three things, but there will be time at the end to ask um, sort of just any social media questions that you may have that you haven't been able to get an answer to so far. Um, so we are going to talk specifically about hashtags, about sharing, and about commenting, because those are three things that I've received a number of questions about in terms of what are they, best practices, how-tos, but also if there are questions at the end that don't fall under one of these three categories but are social media related or of course public image related, then that's certainly fine. We can talk about those at the end as well. Okay. So here we go into the first one, hashtags. So your very first question might be, what the heck is a hashtag? Well, a hashtag is word or words preceded by the hash symbol, which is the, the pound symbol as many of us know it. Um, that's within a social media post or a comment. And what it does is it facilitates a search for it. So basically what it means is it makes it indexable. So there's some examples there. You've got hashtag rotary, hashtag people of action. You know, you could do hashtag D6330, hashtag be the inspiration. Um, what we're going to talk about next is why use hashtags or what the benefit is. But one thing I want you to note before we move on from this slide is that you'll notice there's no spaces. So if I want people of action to be one hashtag, I have to write it all as one word. So I can't do hash symbol, people, space of, space, action. That wouldn't work. It has to be hash symbol, people of action all essentially all one word and that's why i say it's a word or words preceded by the hash symbol all right so why would you use hashtags what's the benefit why not just have regular you know language without hash symbols everywhere to confuse things or throw people off well the benefit is that hashtags using hashtags allow your post to be indexed so essentially it becomes searchable or discoverable to everyone so on instagram or on facebook even if you don't um, even if you have a, a, um, a post that normally wouldn't be uh, viewable by everybody, if you use a hashtag, then if people are searching for that same hashtag, they're able to see the post. Now, there's a good example below here. If you own a bakery, you might want to add, you know, if you own a bakery and you have a couple hundred followers or a couple hundred people that are connected to your account, definitely they're going to see your content for the most part. But you want it to have a further reach. And one of the ways to have that further reach is to get more people to like your account or to follow you on Instagram or on Facebook. That's certainly one way. But another way uh, is to use hashtags that are related to your content to get people that might be looking for that same related content to stumble upon your post. So you bake a cake for your bakery and you're putting it out and you decide to take a picture of it. And as part of the caption in the post, the message you post, or you say hashtag delicious or hashtag fresh out of the oven. Um, what that means is that if anyone happens to be searching hashtag delicious on social media or hashtag fresh out of the oven, your post is actually going to appear in the search results. So they don't necessarily have to be following your account. They don't have to be a follower of your Instagram account or your friend on Facebook. They can still see that. And so it's a way to, to reach further than what your typical network would allow. Now, this is definitely something that you would use more with um, a public account. This isn't really something that you would need to use a lot in your personal Facebook account, but certainly your uh, Rotary Club's uh, Facebook page, if you have one, and definitely your Instagram for Business account, if you have one of those set up for your, uh, for your Rotary Club. Um, and same thing with your Twitter account. If by chance you have a Twitter account for your Rotary Club, it would make sense to use hashtags so that if people are searching for similar terms or, this, or rather the same terms, they're going to find your content when they otherwise wouldn't. So I could use, for example, I could go hashtag delicious and I could see posts from all around the world, okay, not just even in my own backyard, but all around the world of other people who are posting, hashtag, or, uh, posting things and using the hashtag delicious in their post or somewhere in the caption okay how are we doing so far is everyone uh keeping up is that making sense have i lost you already how are we doing i'm gonna say no news is good news and i'll take that as a good sign and i'll move on 
Okay. So again, the benefit of using hashtags is it allows your, your material to become searchable beyond your, your network or your club's network. And that's a good thing. You want your, your material to be, uh, to, to sort of reach far and wide. Okay. So another benefit why you should use hashtags, especially on Instagram, and if you have an Instagram account for your club, that's even better. Um, Instagram allows you to follow specific hashtags. So, so before on, on Instagram, you were only able to follow um, accounts or basically people. So if I created an account and I posted pictures to it or videos, you could follow that. Well now, on Instagram, you can, and I'd say now it's not that new, but it is relatively new compared to Instagram itself. You can actually follow specific hashtags in the way you would follow a friend or a business account. So I can Google, or rather, sorry, uh, within Instagram, I can search um, people of action and I can click on the hashtag search bar and I can actually follow hashtag people of action so that when people are posting hashtag people of action, I actually get to follow that content and it will appear in my newsfeed. Now, as far as I'm aware, you don't have that same functionality on Facebook, but you do have it on Instagram. So that means if you are trying to get your club more exposure and you're using hashtag rotary, uh, hashtag rotary international, hashtag people of action, you know, hashtag be the inspiration, whatever it might be. Um, if, if there are people that have subscribed to those same hashtags, they're going to potentially see your content. And that's a great thing. So now I want to talk a little bit about hashtag best practices. Now I will, uh, full disclosure, I am not a social media expert at all. I don't come from a marketing background. So these are best practices that uh, come from a little bit of personal experience, as well as some research that I've done on different websites and in talking to other uh, people who have more smarts when it comes to social media than I do. Um, but I do think that they are relatively safe best practices, so they're not going to you know, have you out of the ballpark in terms of what makes sense for social media. So what you want to look for with using hashtags is what I call hashtag heaven. And to find that, you want to consider three things. The length of your hashtags, the quantity of your hashtags in a given post, and the popularity of the hashtags that you're using. So let's take a look at each one. Very first one is length. What I want to say about length is that less is sometimes more. So take a look at this. Okay, take a look at that first one. Uh, you know, sorry, but no one is actually going to take the time to decipher this. That's an extremely long hashtag. Now, if you're using hashtags in Twitter, you're only able to use 140 characters, or, or I think it's extended now, but, the, but people aren't even going to take, you know, that much space out of their post to post something like that. Um, and you'll see, you know, even if you, the next post, yes, even if you help them by using capitals, it's still annoying. So if it's really long like that and you have, your eyes have to try to decipher one word from the other, not going not gonna to be very popular. People aren't going to use it, okay? Um, so you want to keep it relatively short. So hashtag people of action, hashtag doing good, hashtag be the inspiration, hashtag Rotary International, so on and so forth, okay? That's not to say you will never find long hashtags. You certainly will. And sometimes you'll go, wow, I can't believe someone took the time to write this whole thing out. Um, but what you will find is that there aren't many people posting with that same hashtag. And I'll talk to that in a minute uh, when I speak about popularity of your hashtags in terms of reaching that hashtag heaven. The next piece is uh, quantity. You don't want to do what I've done in the example there. Hashtag do, hashtag not, hashtag simply, hashtag put, hashtag ah, hashtag hash, hashtag sign, et cetera, et cetera. Even saying it out loud gets a little bit annoying and is something that you don't even want to see, let alone have to read in your head, let alone read out loud. So you want to avoid that. I would put hashtags next to significant words. So if you are doing an Instagram or Facebook post, perhaps about your annual fish fry, the fish fries over, you want to, or maybe it's in, it's in the middle of it and you want to do a post mid event. Um, you know, you might say, you know, here we are at my hashtag rotary clubs, uh, annual hashtag fish fry. So, you know, so grateful to the many people in the community who supported us. Um, hashtag people of action. Okay. So you've got a couple in there. They are relative to what the point of the post is. So it's, it's, uh, um, the fish fry, it's rotary, it's maybe hashtag community, but you didn't post, you know, you didn't hashtag every single word. So what I would say is put it next to significant words or phrases and aim for two to six hashtags per post. Uh, much more than that, and you will probably find engagement tends to drop off. Any fewer than that, you're really only posting one, and then you are, are kind of hedging your bets that the one that you're posting is going to be searched frequently, and, and you can't always necessarily bet that or know that that's gonna be the case. 
So a couple hashtags, but not too many. Okay, next one, popularity. Take a look at these numbers here. Now, these numbers are from Instagram. They're from just a little while ago when I first uh, designed this webinar. So when you search for the hashtag Rotary on Instagram, there's approximately 1.4 million posts or publications that use hashtag Rotary. There's 157,000 that use hashtag Rotary International. And as you can see, 15,000, almost 16,000 that use People of Action. 75,000 using Be The Inspiration. And then if I wanted to use D6330 for District 6330, only 48. So what does this mean? Does it mean that less is always more? You know, does it mean always go with the most popular one? Does it mean use the less popular one? Well, not necessarily. But all it means is that the more popular the hashtag is that you're using, the more likely it is to get lost in the shuffle. Okay? So the more, if you're going to use hashtag rotary, there's 100, well, sorry, 1 1.4 million hashtags or rather publications that you're competing against. So you're more likely to get lost in the shuffle. It's less likely that someone will see your post. It's not necessarily impossible, but it's less likely because that means they have to, they have to scroll longer to see it. If you use a hashtag that is less popular, however, so the opposite end of that is that it's less likely to be searched and therefore less likely to be seen. So if I am doing a bunch of great posts, but I'm only doing hashtag D6330, if there's only 48 other associated posts, that means not many people are using that hashtag, which means it's not many people that are probably looking for that hashtag. Generally speaking, those two correlate. The more people that are looking, or sorry, the more people that are using a given hashtag generally means the more people are also searching for that hashtag. So D6330 is very specific, right? It definitely, um, would narrow a lot of posts down to just my district, but you know, people around the world, you know, someone in district, I don't know, 4238, aren't necessarily going, hmm, I wonder if I should just randomly search for a random district and see if they pop up. Probably not going to happen. But they might do hashtag people of action and stumble upon your post. So what's the remedy or what's the solution? Well, do a little bit of research first, right? Um, I, I quickly found this information just by on my phone on Instagram and I just typed in a couple of terms first. Um, and, uh, I just looked at those terms very quickly and right away it tells you how many publications have that hashtag or use that hashtag. Now do your research first again for another reason. Sometimes you will find that certain hashtags have a meaning that you might not have thought about. And, and let me use an example of that. If I go back to this first one, hashtag delicious, well, without being inappropriate, you could imagine what some people might attach to or you know, what they might use hashtag delicious for on a post. So you might uh, uh, use it in a publication thinking it's totally innocent, only to find out maybe it's not so innocent. So hashtag delicious might show you lots of food, but it also might show you some other things that you, know, you go, oh my gosh, I didn't really think I would find that in searching for that. So do your research first. If you're trying out a new one, if your club says, you know what, we want to try a new hashtag. We want to maybe have a dedicated hashtag for our club. So hashtag Rotary Goderich, hashtag Rotary London, hashtag, you know, Rotary 6330, whatever it might be, make sure you do check how many posts are associated with it first. And when you do that, when you search for that post on Instagram, for example, not only does it tell you the number of publications that use that hashtag, it also shows you what those posts are. So you can see the, the, the nature of those posts. So what's the solution? Do you only go with the more popular one and potentially get lost in the shuffle? Or do you go with the less popular one and you know, be less likely to be found? Well, no, you do what I just said with quantity. Aim for two to six hashtags. So you might do a couple of those. You might do hashtag Rotary, hashtag Rotary International, hashtag Be The Inspiration, and hashtag Rotary Godrich. So now you're, those people that are searching Rotary are more likely to find you because you've used that, pub, that hashtag in your publication. But then also the people that are just searching for something very specific, Rotary Goderich, you know, as you're trying to get that uh, hashtag a little bit trending and a little bit more popular, you're also going to hit them as well. So that's why we say use multiple hashtags because you would appear in both of those searches and that's a great thing. So do a little bit of research first to find out the popularity of the hashtag you're considering using. Um, and then you know, start building up a little bit of a database by using those hashtags consistently. So you might decide among all the people in your club that use your club's social media accounts, we're going to always use hashtag rotary. We're going to always use hashtag be the inspiration until the end of this rotary year, for example. And then we're always going to use hashtag rotary Goderich. 
And you know, the first couple times you post, if you were to then search hashtag Rotary Goderich on Facebook or Instagram, you're probably only going to see, you know, three or four posts because that's all you've posted. But if you are, you know, actively posting, regularly posting, you might find after six months that now it's a couple hundred posts that are Rotary Goderich, hashtag Rotary Goderich. Or you might even find people in the community because maybe you're out in the community and you're telling people, hey, if you post about Rotary, um, you know, and saying to your members, if you post about Rotary in general for our club, make sure you use the hashtag, hashtag Rotary uh, Goderich. Well, you might find within three or six months, maybe you have a couple hundred posts that are, uh, are searchable when you search uh, ro hashtag Rotary Godrich. So you can build up a little bit of a presence or a following behind a certain hashtag if you use it consistently enough, but you do have to use it consistently. If you only have eight posts, then probably not going to get very far. So here's an example on Facebook. Um, I went to my Facebook uh, bar, search bar and I typed people, hashtag people of action. And here's the type of things that came up. Mostly stuff that I've liked and I'm involved with. Um, the people of action editor used hashtag people of action. The Rotary Club of Goderich, what do you know? They actually have seven matching posts where they've used hashtag people of action. Rotary in London has also done seven matching posts. These photos, in the description of the photo, the people would have done hashtag people of action. And now I can narrow that down. Maybe I want to just see posts I've already seen. Maybe I want it to be London, Ontario, you know, a specific year. I can certainly narrow that down. But you could start to see how you could use that hashtag to search for uh, related posts or related information. So you could search. If, I, I would say it's definitely more effective and a little bit more streamlined using this search function in Instagram uh, to search for specific hashtags, but it certainly is usable and becoming more usable within, uh, within Facebook as well. So some, some usefulness there if you are using a hashtag consistently. Okay, on to sharing. Sharing is caring, or is it? Uh, one thing when it comes to social media is that we start to notice that there's been, there's a lot of social media noise. And what I mean by that is the more people you follow, the more pages that you like on Facebook or Instagram, and, and, and the more you're um, sort of involved in it, the more noise you get thrown at you, okay? The more things you're scrolling through in different accounts and different posts and different people, it's very easy to get lost in the shuffle, okay? Um, and there is a lot of shuffle. There's a lot of noise on social media in general. And so what you want to make sure of when you are sharing anything on social media is asking yourself, it, by sharing this post, is, is my sharing of this post adding to the noise or is it going to rise above it? By adding to it, I mean, is it just a post that maybe isn't that important, maybe isn't that relevant, but it's just maybe on a whim I went, oh, I'm going to share the post. But did I think about, is it important to share? Um, is it just an interest thing? Is it something that's trying to pull attention to something, something that I think is important? Or is it just kind of maybe a funny little thing that I read and thought, oh, I'm going to share this? Or is it something that I really want to stand out? And not only do I want it to stand out, but do I think that this post will stand out because of something within it? Because it's got a good message, because it's important, because it speaks to an important issue, because it's very, you know, visually stimulating, something like that, okay? So ask yourself that before you post. What I see a lot of is people who are trying to enhance their face or their Rotary Club's Facebook presence by simply sharing everything that their Rotary Club Facebook page posts to their own account. So no matter what it is, whether it's, hey, meeting cancellation, don't come today, or you know, this is our speaker next week, or hey, it's our annual fundraiser, no matter what the post is, that person goes to that post, they click share to my wall, and they share it to their own personal Facebook wall. And that seems like a great thing because you say to yourself, well, you know, there's a couple hundred people who like my club's Facebook page, so that's great. But, you know, I have a couple hundred friends on the side and some of those people don't like the Facebook page yet. So, hey, I can reach those people simply by sharing all of my Facebook, uh, Rotary, uh, sorry, Facebook page posts to my personal page. Perfect. I'll do it. Well, the way I, I liken it is this. The analogy I have is if you are walking by a hydro pole that has one big bright poster and then you're walking by another hydro pole that has been used to share information and posters for years and years, and it's got remnants of 500 old posters, and there's staples everywhere, and everything's kind of blurred and faded. Which one are you going to pay more attention to? The poster that's clean and bright and sticks out and is one, or the pole that has, you know, five or 10 or 20 years of old posters and other things on it? Which one will you pay more attention to? Well, almost certainly 
you'll pay more attention to that solitary poster, the one that stands out. And the same thing happens on Facebook. So if you are sharing every single post that your Facebook, uh, your, sorry, your Rotary Club Facebook page has, your friends that you think, oh, well, I'll get them interested in Rotary or I'll at least make them aware by, by flooding their newsfeed with this, they're going to start ignoring it. It's going to start to become part of that social media noise that they just scroll through. So you've got to ask yourself, is it relevant to the people or to the audience that I'm trying to share it to? Is it not, and not only is it relevant, but is it important to them? Is it stimulating to them? Okay. And is there anything they can do with that information? Is it just a post about how much you love being a Rotarian? Can they do anything with that? Well, no, but you know, so what's the point in sharing that? Now, not to say that that's necessarily a bad thing to share all the time, but you do want to make sure that you're saying, well, what could they do with this information? Am I then going to follow up by inviting them to a Rotary Club meeting, explaining why I'm a Rotarian? You know, and that's where the next piece comes in, adding your own comments to shared posts. So when you share a post to Facebook, Facebook has made it very easy to uh, directly and quickly share a post without any adding any comments or anything uh, to share a post on your Facebook wall. Okay. That seems like a great thing. But again, if you don't want to get lost in the noise, you might want to consider adding your own message that then appears on top of the shared post. So you might want to explain why you're sharing this post. You know, if you're sharing a post about polio immunization and how important you think it is, instead of just sharing the post from Rotary International, that's, you know, it's very professional, it's very well done, it's very clean and polished. But to someone that doesn't really know much about it, it might just look like an advertisement. And so they might be thinking, well, why did, you know, why did she share this? But if you write a little caption first that says, you know, polio eradication is really important to me. People in my family have struggled and suffered from polio, and it's a disease that I don't want to ever have to deal with again because it brought my family a lot of sorrow. That would connect to people um, who are seeing this on your Facebook wall to go, oh, that's why she's posting this. That's why this is important to her. That's why it's relevant to me because as a friend of hers, I care about this. So you want to make sure that the relevance is there. And adding your own comments can certainly do that. Okay. The other part then is being selective in what you post. So if you have, if your Rotary Club has a big fundraiser coming up, you know, your annual fish fry, you got, apparently I need to go for an all you can eat fish and chips because I've got that on my mind. But if your, uh, your Rotary Club's annual fish fry is coming up and you really want to draw a lot of attention to that, you want to buy, you want people to buy tickets, you want to sell out, you want it to be a very successful fundraiser. Well, maybe for a couple weeks leading up to it, the only posts that you're going to share are going to be the posts related to the fish fry because that's the only thing you think to yourself, if anybody is seeing anything about my Rotary Club at this point and for the next month, I just want it to be about the fish fry. That's the most important piece right now. So you might say for the next month, I'm just going to share posts related to the fish fry. Now I get it. That can be challenging because you go, oh, well, they no, they're posting so many great things and I want them to be, you know, I want everything to be important and I want everything to be seen, but you do have to pick and choose. So at, for that month and maybe for a couple of days after, you might say, I'm just going to post about the fish fry. Okay. Next point is think about where you want to share. Do you want to share it on your wall? Does that make the most sense? Or, you know, if you're sharing a post about why someone joined Rotary or why Rotary is important and you have a friend that's thinking of becoming a prospective member and has sort of mentioned it to you and you, and you thought to yourself, you know, what? I think if I could give them a little bit more information, I think if I could maybe show them a really cool video from Rotary, um, maybe they would be more interested. So then in that case, when you have the option of sharing to your own wall or sharing with someone else, you probably should think about sharing to that person's wall directly. So instead of going on your wall and just trying to get everyone to see it, be direct with it. Share it with that friend specifically on that friend's wall and say, hey, you were asking about why I'm a Rotarian. You were asking about why it's important to me. Check out this video. I think you might find it interesting. Or even more direct, you might send it to them as a message. So it, it isn't something that would go on their public Facebook wall. It would actually just go into their messages. Now, no one else is going to see that except them, but if you're trying to really have that connection with them, you're trying to maybe get them into Rotary, you're trying to get them interested, that's a very direct way. And that starts a dialogue versus kind of an advertisement on their Facebook wall of, hey, here's why I think Rotary is important. So, you know, be very aware of the benefit of posting it on your wall, or maybe not the benefit, but sort of the goal or the purpose of posting something to your wall versus a friend's wall versus messaging it to them or posting to a Facebook group, okay? So to someone else's Facebook group. And the last thing is avoid Rotary jargon, especially if this isn't going to another Rotarian and you are trying to get people engaged about Rotary, get them knowing about Rotary. If there's a really great video from a past Rotary International president 
I can guarantee you if you say, listen to this speech from RIP Joe Schmidt, they're going to go, oh, Joe, you know, Joe Schmidt passed away. That's so sad. Because they don't know that RIP means Rotary International President. They have no idea. So avoid that Rotary jargon. You know, avoid talking about, you know, the DNDGE for, you know, district governor nominee elect and say, this is, you know, our district governor or our incoming district governor. Uh, he's essentially or she's essentially in charge of Rotary for the district for the year, or helping clubs reach the next level within our district for the year, our Rotary district, you know, provide a little bit of backstory so that those reading it that might not have a connection to Rotary or maybe are getting into Rotary don't feel lost when they read the post. So try to avoid that, that rotary slang or that rotary jargon that, you know, when you've been a Rotarian for a while, you don't even have to think twice about. But if you're not a Rotarian or you're new to rotary, definitely going to throw you off. All right. So then on to commenting, some, some uh, best practices for commenting. Keep in mind that when you are posting something about rotary, about your Rotary Club, a, a video from Rotary International. In a way, you are representing Rotary. So as you can see there, remember to be professional. I say that because I see lots of posts where people have you know, very blatant spelling mistakes or just very poor spelling or grammar, whatever it might be. Now, I'm not saying we all have to be a, you know, a grade four English teacher. That's not what I'm getting at. But maybe make that extra effort to make sure that you, know, you spell check something or make sure that something is well worded. Because if you're trying to say, you know, join Rotary, it's a professional organization. It's a great way to get good network in the, in the community. It's a great way to meet you know, high achieving people. And your thing is riddled with spelling mistakes or it's a run on sentence. You know, what does that person now think about Rotary? They're going, oh gosh, maybe this isn't such an appealing thing after all. So keep in mind that you represent Rotary. And I don't just mean professionalism in terms of spelling and grammar. I mean in terms of your opinion, right? In terms of making sure that you're posting something that follows Rotary guidelines, that isn't you know, very opinionated, that isn't religious, that isn't political, because Rotary shouldn't be, Rotary posts shouldn't be of that nature, right? Make sure to keep it relevant if you're gonna post a comment about something. Um, you know, if, if there's a post about uh, a polio eradication and maybe you visited India, and this is a video specifically about polio eradication in India, you know, that's great that you visited India 10 years ago, but we probably don't need to hear all about the trip in your comment. That, that's not really relevant. Keep it relevant to polio immunization in India, okay? Now, this is something that we don't see all the time, but when you do see, it kind of go, did that person really even read what this was about? Did they pay attention? Or is this just them trying to sort of get on a soapbox, as it were, and just talk about themselves? You don't want to come off that way. And you don't want anyone in your club to come off that way either, and you don't want your club to be portrayed that way. Okay, depending on what you're commenting on, consider adding a call to action. Now, what I mean by that, for anyone in the sales world, they know very well probably what a call to action is, but basically uh, try to engage whoever it is that's reading your comments with your content. So asking them to comment back on something or asking a question as opposed to just a, a declarative sentence, you know, making it something that you can create engagement or conversation about. Um, you know, that is going to get a lot more engagement than just simply commenting just for the sake of commenting or saying, I also like this post. You know, I also like this post. I found it very, uh, you know, touching and I thought it really connected with Rotary. That's a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, what is it that connects you to Rotary or, or whatever it might be? Maybe that wasn't a great example, but kind of try and draw more out of people than just simply a phrase. Okay. And again, if you want to be inclusive, avoid the Rotary jargon. Okay. Okay, and I, I got a note from Kim here, so I think that's a good point to read. So it says, just a note about emojis. It's fun to speak emoji in three character phrases that can fit the post. I find it helps the Twitter version stand out more. Uh, that is to say, when you post to Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Yeah, that's right. You know, you can have a lot of fun with emojis. And I put that emoji there sort of a, to be a bit cheeky, I guess, as a joke. But yeah, you can certainly use emojis in a positive way uh, and, in, and in a way that sort of helps keep the post lighthearted and fun and entertaining. And you know, a picture does speak a thousand words. So a lot of times, um, you know, you can put a picture that you would have had to try and explain and it wouldn't have worked out as well. So yeah, certainly emojis can be a lot of fun and add a certain levity to the post that is otherwise sometimes hard to, to master, hard to, to accomplish via text. Okay, so we've talked about hashtags, commenting and sharing. Do we have any questions about those three topics or any other perplexing social media conundrums? Is there anything else on your mind? You can either unmute yourself if you have a question or you can simply type in the chat, whichever works best for you. I, uh, this is Stu here. Hi, Stu. Hi. I uh, 
so is there just the three platforms that use hashtags like Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter? Or well, there arguably there are more. I mean, there's certainly things like LinkedIn and uh, that's more for professionals. That's more of a, a business or working, you know, for people that are working or want to keep it in a more professional stream. Um, and Rotary does have a presence on there. Um, I don't see each individual Rotary Club having a big presence on LinkedIn, so I wouldn't spend too much time on it, but that certainly is another one. Um, I mean, there are others, but I would say, yeah, the big ones are still definitely uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Now, can you direct your message to specific people in the community, or how, like, how do you go about doing that so if you are looking to so say you have a post about an upcoming fish fry and you want to share it with the local i don't know the local fishing association because you think they might be really interested if they have a facebook page you could certainly post your post there and that way they get it um or if they have a facebook group you could post it there as well if it's public um, but but generally what you would probably do is you might tag people in that post So if you know Stu if your best friend Jim is part of the fishing association and you want them to know about it Then when I'm doing the post and I'm friends with him on Facebook I would probably tag him in the post and say Jim, you know Do you think you and your fishing buddies would want to show up to the fish fry? Let me know how many tickets you want So I'd probably tag him directly in it So how do you tag? So on Facebook, if someone's already friends with you and you're creating a post, if you start typing their name, uh, Facebook will usually start to auto-complete it for you. So if it senses you're typing a name, it'll uh, drop down kind of appears. Um, so if I'm typing the name Jim, once I type J-I, if it's picked it up by then, sometimes it takes a few more characters than that. But if it's already starting to pick it up, then it might actually provide a drop down with anyone on your Facebook list that's named Jim or has the words J-I in their name. Sometimes it takes a little longer. I mean, a, a name like Jim is not very long, but something like Tyler, for example, I could start typing, you know, T-Y-L-E. And by the time I get to T-Y-L, it may already be having a drop down of anyone on my Facebook list that's named Tyler. So then in that case, um, you know, I, I can tag them. Actually, let me see here. I'm just gonna close um, the, the window here because I want to go to the group and I can actually show you that. So if I'm, you can see the screen there, I'm gonna write a post and I wanna tag our district governor, Jim Schlotman, so I start typing Jim, um, and of course it's not showing, let me try with capitals here. So of course it, in real time when you try to do these things that they don't work the way you predict, but there we go. So as I started typing Jim, it started to finish it for me. So these are any of the Jims, some of them that would be part of this group already. So I could click Jim Schlotman and it actually tags him. So when you see it highlighted like that, it's actually tagged him. And now when I click post eventually, he'll get a notification. Hey, you've been tagged in a post and he can come view this post and see what it's all about. And I can actually tag multiple people. So I could also, I could also tag, um, let's see, there you go, Trish. I could tag, let me see, someone else, Tanya Wolf. I could tag Tanya. Um, so again, I click that and now she's been tagged in it as well. So I could say, hey, are you folks interested in the hashtag? fish fry just taking a minute to load but it'll uh, it should appear there we go and now anything that's connected right anything that's sort of indexable or searchable has now been blue so Jim Schlotman it's connected to his Facebook profile Tanya Wolf same thing and hashtag fish fry now means it's searchable by the hashtag fish fry okay does that answer your question Uh, gives me a little more understanding of how this works. Perfect. Good. Uh, I think I would need to spend some more time to uh, uh, use this. It's kind of like learning computers all over again. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it is a whole. It's a whole different ballgame than just you know using certain aspects of a computer for sure. But you know what I always say with social media, Stu, is have fun with it. You can't break it. You know, if you're if you're going to try something like this, you know tag your husband or your wife or your friend and just let them know, Hey, I'm going to test out some stuff. I'm going to tag it. I can delete it later if I mess it up, but I'm going to try it out and just bear with me, you know, and go ahead and try it, you know, have fun with it. You're, you're generally not going to break anything. Right. Okay. I, I might try and find if I, uh, I find a, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram or whatever for dummies. 
<laughs> you can certainly find that online as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll try that as well, but you kind of give me a little bit of a peek as to what right. I'm facing with this uh, topic. Perfect. Uh, I also see a question from Kim here. When people share your club's Facebook post, should you always like it as the club or personally and comment as the club or personally? You know what, Kim, good question. Um, that really does depend on the nature of the comment. I would say in terms of liking, I, if someone is sharing your club's Facebook post, then I think it's fine to like it as both. I don't really think there's a problem. It's, it's, what I would say is weird is to like your own post. So it's weird to post something and then like it as yourself. And it's weird to post something as your club and then to like it as your club. But if someone is sharing your club's Facebook post and you want to kind of say, hey, thanks for sharing, then I don't think it's any problem to, put, to, to like both as your club and as you or to comment either way. You know, now if someone is, if, if it's about the fish fry and someone shares that post for your club and then someone says, hey, how much are tickets? Um, and you don't know this person, then probably what I would do is I would respond or comment to the response, sorry, respond to the comment as the club. And the reason for that is because if, if I'm just, you know, Kim and I'm responding, this, this person might go, well, how does Kim know what the prices are? Who's Kim? Whereas if I'm responding and it shows, you know, this has been responded to by the Rotary Club of Goderich, okay, perfect. It's the same people who created the event or created the post. I know who's giving me this information. If it's a friend of yours and, and they know it's you, then, then posting as yourself or commenting as yourself probably isn't a big deal. But if it's kind of official or it's about you know, the event or about the post, you might want it to be from your club. Okay. All right, back to the slides here. Are there any, any other questions or are we okay for now? Good for now. Okay, perfect. Great, then in that case, I will move on to just quickly talking about upcoming webinars and webinar recording. So our last webinar of this Rotary year is going to be on May 22nd at 7 p.m. And it's all about using images and videos from the Rotary Foundation and Rotary International. Uh, this isn't so much of a technical or how-to webinar, but it's really to help you uh, expose you to the, the, the vast amount of great images and high quality videos that the Rotary Foundation and Rotary International have made available uh, for you to use. They want you to use this stuff because they recognize that, you know, we're not all, we're not all uh, professional photographers or videographers, but they've made lots of great professional content available and it's available to, for you to use uh, in your Rotary advertising or with your club. So we want you to use it. So it's really just about helping you find that material and, and download it and use it. And new webinars for the upcoming Rotary year will be coming soon uh, when those are ready and the topics are prepared. They will be posted on the public image page of the District 6330 website, and you'll be able to register for those webinars, as well as register for this webinar that I just mentioned, uh, right from there. So you can go to the public image page on the District 6330 website. You can also watch past, uh, sorry, recordings of past webinars, such as this one, which will be on, uh, which will be uploaded there in the next couple of days. All right, with that then, thank you very much. Continue to be the inspiration. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you're able to dive into some, uh, some hashtags, commenting and sharing content uh, in the near future. Take care, everyone, and have a great night. Thank you. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Take care, Stu. Yep.